Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another video and welcome if this is your first time here today. Hello, my name is Whitney and today we are back into the Asylum Challenge. Now, I just wanted to pop in quickly, I wasn't really planning on starting recording right now, but um, I felt like I didn't really have a choice because there were some things that I definitely wanted you guys to see. So, firstly, obviously the last part was a little bit of a sad one, if you haven't seen, if you're not up to date or you just haven't seen the last part please go and watch it otherwise there's going to be some major major spoilers in this part that's your fair warning anyways for those of you that are still here firstly r.i.p Peyton forever in our hearts he got eaten by a cow plant in the last episode and the first thing I wanted to show off is that Ellie has gained this very particular moodlet from Peyton's demise. I forgot that they were enemies and she has got enemies demise moodlet that, that she's actually happy from him passing away. It says the death of a loved one can be traumatic, but the death of an enemy brings nothing but happiness. Sims can laugh at a tombstone to feel at peace. So she has just been getting all sorts of great <laughs> And moodlets ever since Peyton went away. And then she got this other one. Um, oh no, it's gone away. I think she went and autonomously laughed at his tombstone and it gave her a moodlet that she was like happy that he'd gone. It is dark. <laughs> it's dark. Girls twisted. But you know, we knew that she has a bit of a habit of getting rid of male sims and female sims. I feel like maybe she doesn't really mind. And the other thing I wanted to talk about was this little development in the asylum that for some reason, all of our Sims are really enjoying showering in the rain. I don't know why. I don't know whether it's just something in the game's programming that just makes all the Sims autonomously want to either go and shower in the rain or just stand in the rain. Like Janessa is literally just standing there naked in the rain. And then they all kind of react to each other negatively. Like, whoa, you're naked in the rain too. <laughs> I didn't expect to see you at my naked in the rain party. Yeah, they all seem to be doing it and it's just a little bit odd. So those were the developments that I wanted to share with you. I was just kind of coming in here to make her do lots of painting because Lord knows her aspiration needs us to get some work done and those excellent paintings, they're not quite coming as quick as I would like them to. <laughs> so um, yeah, I will be back with you in literally a second, um, for you anyways, when I've done some paintings and we're ready to do this part. <laughs> Okie dokie friends, we are back and we are in creator sim this time because we have got some introductions to do. So, replacing Peyton, coming into the asylum, everybody meet Todd Tanner. Now, Todd is coming to us from a creator, the same creator who created the lovely Janessa, and that is Candy Coated Sims. Thank you so much for sending him our way. He is actually part of a duo of Sims. However, we only have one slot available right now, but who knows if maybe his partner in crime may sneak his way into the asylum as well. But for right now, We've got the lovely Todd. I've hardly changed him up. I've given him a CC skin tone as all of the Sims have. And I have, of course, given him the CC eyes, the CC eyebrows and the outfits that all of the Sims wear in the asylum. So let's look at his traits and then we will get on to his story. So traits wise, he has got the serial romantic trait. I changed it a little bit. I think his first trait he had was like, uh, one of the popularity ones um because he wanted to be super popular but i've given him the serial romantic trait only because i see him being that bro stereotype that classic heartbreaker but there's more to this heartbreaker than there seems he's also self-assured as well as of course erratic as they all must be be, but this is what he looks like. Now let's get up his story that the creator wrote so amazingly about him. Of course there are two sims in this household by Candy Coated and of course we are looking only at Todd. However, it's important to know the story of both of them together and how they are interacting with 
the asylum. And even though Angelo here, which is this lovely looking chap right here, even though he is not in the asylum, I think he is going to be popping up here, there and everywhere. But these guys are best buds, they're best friends, and they have been since their school days. Says meet Todd and Angelo, best friends since childhood, both extremely adventurous and not wanting to conform to society's perception of standards of a nine to five gig. They decide to partner up and start their own business, Paranormal Investigating. Todd and Angelo have always heard about the rumours of the asylum and the hauntings and mysterious disappearances. With their eyes set on cashing in big, no one would expect that once you get into the asylum, you may never come out. I love this story. So big claps to you for writing it so well. I think this is going to bring a different layer into the story because these guys are trying to get that content and kind of spill the like tea on the asylum to everybody else. But will Todd ever actually make it out of the asylum? to tell his story. And actually, this little conspiracy theorist, I think might get on quite well with this little conspiracy theorist right here. Because if you remember Janessa's backstory, she was thrown into the asylum for trying to prove conspiracies on an island. And I do believe that this kind of the same thing as what Todd is trying to do here with the asylum. And Janessa certainly has the inside scoop, especially now there's some ghouls going around that she just so happened to have some romantic relations with. The plot like a fine gravy does thicken. Is that the saying? I think it's meant to be wine. Does wine doesn't thicken? What am I talking about? Anyways, this is Todd. I'm excited to get him thrown in. So without further ado, let's throw him in. <laughs> Alrighty, so we are back in the asylum. Full disclosure, Todd has been living in the asylum for a few sim days while I have been doing the aspiration or the potings for Ellie's aspiration. She's only got, I think, two left to make, one left to make. And she's been making some masterpieces as well. There are just paintings everywhere now in this asylum like absolutely everywhere because she has been such a busy bee making all of these beautiful, beautiful paintings. And I'm just keeping them for a rainy day. This one I think is a masterpiece along with this volcano one is also a masterpiece. So girl's been busy. Oh, they've shut off our power. That's okay because we have been busy bees making all that money to pay off the bills. So we can most definitely pay those bills. Who is this? You're a celebrity, Orange Bailey Moon. Excuse you out here on your smartphone. Look at all the kitties. This is not a safe route to school. <laughs> Going past the asylum like this, not safe, not safe at all. <laughs> I wonder if Todd had like a big social media following because I feel like if you're trying to bring down a conspiracy or like, th like weigh it down on a company or whatever you're trying to do, you need like a big following, you know? You need people to listen to you. So I wonder if all those little kids outside on their smartphones are like following the stories. <laughs> they're all trying to get the inside scoop on the asylum, but I don't think they're ever gonna get it, guys. So let's make our final one, a medium classic should do it. What are you doing, girl? You can look after your needs once you have done this painting. I don't even think you need anything, do you? Um, no, you don't. You're looking surprisingly good, actually, right now. Everybody else is looking pretty poor. Uh, <laughs> at least it's stopped raining, so nobody is just gathering outside for naked outdoor parties. I was thinking about throwing, like, a little party and not inviting anybody from the outside and just having, like, a little party to welcome him to the asylum. So maybe we'll do that this evening and just we'll do that in this part. It will be a farewell to Peyton as well as a hello to Todd. Oh, hey there, Luke. How is it going, sir? How are you doing? We're trying, oh, it's Harvest Fest tomorrow. That's exciting. There we go. Next part, guys. Harvest Fest. You can look forward to that. That'll be interesting in an asylum full of erratic sims. <laughs> also, I got a notification about Ver. I don't know whether, can I find it? Yeah, this is what I got. Saying that Ver has now become a minor vampire. She has started the 
the ascent to the unhallowed rank of Grand Master Vampire, keep using powers, researching vampires, and talking to other vampires to earn more vampire experience. So I don't know what this girl has been doing in the background, but she's obviously been up to some shady things because she's leveling up. I don't know whether they do that just on their own, if they continue to feed, if they get some sort of points from that. I've never played as a vampire, but she seems to be getting up there. And I, a few parts ago, I was saying that we were having random vampires just kind of appear on the lot, like fly in as bats and then just start talking to Ver. I wonder what is that about? I, I think she might be trying to turn this asylum into some sort of vampiric activity hub. And I don't know whether I'm for it. I think maybe she's on a bit of a character arc of actually, oh, we've done it. We've done it. My goodness. Okay, wait, that, that thought, that thought, I'm gonna carry on. I think Vem might be on a bit of a character arc of actually coming round to the idea of being a vampire. Like she wants to be a werewolf, hence why she looks the way she does with the ears and the hair and everything. That's what she wanted to be. And this shifty back alley person that said they were turning her into a werewolf was actually a vampire and turned her into a vampire. And that's her backstory. But I think she's coming around to being a vampire. I think she is actually enjoying the chaos that she causes. And and now she's actually growing through the ranks. So I'm worried that she's gonna do a complete 180 on us, <laughs> but I guess we will see. Anyways, we just completed our level of the aspiration. So that's good. Let's sell that to a collector straight away. Boom. Um, girl, go and go and do whatever you want. I mean, I don't know what you wanna do, but go and do it. Go and do whatever you want. Yeah, go and chat with Gerald and play incredible sports because you have earned it. I'm gonna look at your aspirations. Okay, so we are level what? What level are we? Man, we've always, this is the last level of this aspiration. We've got to reach level 10 of the painting skill and complete five masterpieces. Could we do that in this part? Could we complete the first aspiration in this part? Girl, okay, I think we actually could. So let us just keep on the classic painting, medium paintings, because we've had a few masterpieces just from doing medium paintings. So maybe we'll just keep her going with the medium paintings for a little bit and just see how we go, because we could complete that in this part. But yeah, in terms of everybody else's storyline, Vera is definitely on an interesting arc. Who else have we got? I think Janessa's being thrown on an interesting arc as well. She keeps going a morning at Peyton's grave and it is without doubt the saddest thing I've ever seen in my life. Uh, <laughs> she just keeps going and doing it. Oh, we need to feed the cow plant. That's what we need to do. Gertrude is still not grown up into a fully realized cow plant. So yeah, makes an excellent source of food, cuddles and lifelong friendship. What food do you get from a cow plant? You can get food from a cow plant? No, you can't. No, you can't. I don't think you can, can you? I've never seen that done if you can. If you can get food from a cow plant? Interesting, oh yeah, and Todd has already been eaten by Moo. <laughs> Maleficent has already got Todd. As literally as soon as he entered the asylum, he ate that cake and he learned his lesson pretty damn quick, I have to say. <laughs> there we go, we fed Moo, so Moo will not feed on anybody else today. Um, I've actually gone back on my idea of trying to get the aspiration done on this one. <laughs> I wanna throw the party instead. So let's throw a party. Um, um, should we try and throw two parties? One right now for the morning of Peyton's death and then one to welcome in um, Todd. <laughs> totally forgot his name for a minute. I'll get there. He's just a newbie, you know? Oh, I really want to click and see who you're getting a phone call from, Todd. What are you planning, sir? Is it your friend? Your friend from outside? Is it Angelo? His name is Angelo, right? I think it might be. Who was ringing you, Angelo? <laughs> Who was it? <laughs> we are going to plan a social event. We can do a party with just some people in the house, right? I think so. This is gonna be, oh, a house party. A keg party could be fun. My keg parties always absolutely flop. A dinner party, birthday party, carver party, or a wedding. We could get some kegs up in here, right? Get some emotions flowing. That could be quite fun. Let's do a keg party. Let's do it. This is gonna be absolutely awful. We will host um, because why would we not host? And then we are going to one. Oh no, we can't. Oh damn it, I've messed it up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
everybody that lives with us and we're not going to hire a mixologist because this household plus juice sounds like a bad idea to me and there we go oh i need to get a i need to get a keg i need to get a keg <laughs> We can't have a keg party without any kegs. Maybe we should get several so we can mix up the emotions because the kegs, the good thing about the kegs is that they will influence the Sims emotions and we love that in the asylum. <laughs> there we go, that will do. We don't have a music system. Should we get a music system for this? We're gonna delete it straight after, okay? And technically I think we are allowed like both the TV and the radio and I got rid of it because it was just annoying. So we will get them a radio just for the sake of this party. Where should we put it? There we go. We are golden. So let's turn that music up to 11. <laughs> oh, I hate myself. Come and dance. Everybody come on. It's party time, guys. We're here for a good time. Come on, guys. Oh, oh, Olivia's... She's giving it a go. Oh, it didn't, it didn't work. It didn't work. Have you done it? I don't think you did it, did you? Oh, everyone's giving it a go. <laughs> Is this Todd? Todd, you're getting straight on that one. Oh, no, no, that didn't work either. That did not work either. Come on, guys. Who's going to get it? Who's going to be able to tap it first? Is it going to be Olivia or is it going to be Todd? We need to socialize with our guests, apparently. Let's thank him for coming <laughs> to the party in his own house. So which one is working right now? Is this the silly one? I think it is. Everyone is just gathering. This is so wholesome. Welcome to the asylum, Todd. Doesn't Olivia look sassy? Look at her. Seriously, look at that woman. Good job, Olivia. She's being like the hostess with the mostess, isn't she? Look at her go. Olivia, you are basically hosting this party. We are doing nothing. Are you going to fill up this one as well? She is such a good host. <laughs> we could not relate. Look at this asylum. This asylum is popping off. Oh, you've got this one done as well, guys. They're all just kind of standing around. Um, Olivia, are you coming to stock this one as well? Oh, no, you're coming to yell at Gerald. <laughs> of course you are. <laughs> Why would you not be? Alcohol on a broken toilet is not going to be a good mix. It's really not. We will fix that quickly. Um, is everyone drinking some juice? People are drinking juice. They're feeling playful. Olivia is still being the hostess with the mostess, even though she's not the hostess at all. <laughs> she's such a gem, isn't she? I absolutely love her. She is my... I, I just love her. I just absolutely love her. And then she's just mean to everybody while she's just being such a boss woman. Oh, Ver's going for the flirty one. Oh, Janessa's having a good time. I'm glad you're having a good time, Janessa. You've been so sad recently. Does someone just walk in on us? Ophelia? <laughs> Ophelia, don't do that. <laughs> We're just serving up a storm in the kitchen. Everyone's having some good time to socialize in. There's juice cups everywhere. Oh, it's so these two are getting along. What are you doing? Oh, it's nice to see them getting along. Oh, oh my lord. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh my lord. Todd, what are you doing? <laughs> we finished an, an entire juice keg. Which one? Okay, well, you know, we we've done we've done good, everybody. Um, we've got some food going on. We've got some music. Everyone's dancing, having a good time. We're celebrating. Oh, Olivia is a bit occupied right now. Should she still go to work? Olivia, you're being such a good host and I'm not meant to interfere, but like miss work? Let's let's have them both miss work. Don't eat any cake, Gerald, please. We're not having any sort of um any sort of people passing away while we're kind of celebrating death, life and new people. It's just not it's just not going on, okay? Todd looks like you're having a bad time, mate. This is your welcome party and you're grungy and embarrassed <laughs> what's going on mate another keg stand oh ophelia <laughs> ophelia honey that wasn't good was it janessa's doing keg stands with everybody janessa is just on it with the keg stands and we witnessed that one what are we doing 
Oh, we're gonna go grab a cup of juice. I wanna try a keg stand. We're feeling confident. Maybe we should try and do a keg stand. Ver, will you do a keg stand with us? Is she gonna do it with us? Come on, Ver, I wanna try it. Is Ophelia going for round two of keg stand? Ophelia, what a wild child. Mate, she's doing it. Oh, she's not doing it. She's not doing it. False alarm. False alarm. <laughs> Everyone will remember that. Everyone thought that was bad. <laughs> Man, what a wild night. These guys are having a great time. Where are you going with the fair? Oh, you're doing the keg stand? Which one are you doing? You're doing the playful one? Go on, Ellie. Go on, girl. Oh, none of these sims were made to keg stand. <laughs> none of them. <laughs> oh, what a good night. Everyone's had a great time. We should have a nice chat with Ver. Like, we always have a bit of an up and down relationship with her, but we're feeling really confident and everyone's a little bit juiced. So let's have a bit of a chat with Ver. Let's maybe get a little bit romantic, you know? Let's give her a bold pickup line. Yeah, we're gonna strut in here. Look at us strutting in. And we're gonna throw that bold pickup line right up her. Oh, we're gonna joke about frogs first. <laughs> Everyone's starting to go to bed. The party is is over, really. Everyone's quietening down. Um, but we are still up with Ver. Let's let's get our romance on. Let's flirt with her. I don't know whether it's smart for either of these two to be in a relationship. I feel like it is most probably a mutually toxic relationship because she has clearly got some vampire plans going on. And she's always on everybody's bad side. And Ellie has a history of just getting rid of all of the people that she's had romantic relationships with. I don't know whether that's something that either of them should want to get involved with. So I'm a little bit concerned, <laughs> to say the least. But that doesn't mean they're not clearly drawn to each other. Oh my god, look how many juice cups are everywhere. This was a successful keg party. She's feeling very flirty and we're feeling very confident. So I think it is time. We went in for a kiss with Ver, you know? Oh, she's going for it. Oh, my babies. Oh, it's happened. They've had their first kiss and now Ellie is, is off to sleep. What an eventful part. Look at Ver. She goes straight back to the flirty one and gets another drink. Girl, I don't think you need any more flirty drinks. I think you've had your fill. Yeah, you need something else to drink. <laughs> That's for sure. Anyways, I am going to end this part right here, as we always do, with our girl Ellie heading off to bed. So thank you so much for watching this part. I really hope you enjoyed it. I really enjoyed this one. I always enjoy recording this series. I just love interacting with all these sims and it makes it even better that you guys created these things. Huge thank you again to Candy Coated for creating the lovely Todd. He's looking a little bit stanky right now and is getting on quite well with Ophelia, which is concerning. <laughs> Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of Todd, whether you're enjoying the series so far, the keg party, the romance. How does everyone feel about the romance with um, Ver and Ellie? How are we feeling about it all? Don't forget to like this video if you liked it and if you're enjoying the series. If you're not caught up on the series, please go back, watch them from the beginning. There's a whole playlist. You will not be disappointed. And please hit subscribe if you haven't already and check that notification bell so you get notified every single time I upload a brand new video. Anyways, I will see you guys in the next part. Bye guys.